Today in Roach Reflections I want to talk about memory. Seems an odd thing but the idea came about for me because yesterday I fished my local stretch of the stow. I've been pretty restricted at the moment as to where I can go and I ended up fishing a swim that I knew that I hadn't fished it for a very, very long time. In fact, it was so far back, I decided to dig through my fishing diaries and try and find out when it was. And it turned out it was a winter league back in November 1984. So 37 years or 36 and a bit years ago. That's a very long time. And the river had changed so much you wouldn't recognise the river from back in 1984 to now. The banks are pretty much the same, but the trees that are along the bank now weren't there back in 1984. It was just a plain bit of grassy bank and the trees had probably been cut down and uh, over the years they've self-set and uh, taken root and you've now got trees a foot thick. And I fished away yesterday and ended up with a couple of nice roach. The river wasn't in very good trim, but I was pleased to get them, so that was all right. But without that diary, there was no way, although I could remember fishing there, there's no way I could have put a figure on the date, tell you what I caught back, back all those years ago. And unlike if you write something, a written record, that doesn't change from when you write, write it. The human memory has to be uh, you have to recall things over and over again to be able to still remember it. And each time you recall it, there's a danger you actually change the details. I've seen this over and over again in fishing. Um, many years ago, uh, one of the Christchurch anglers, Julian Taylor, had a fantastic match catch in an open match on the lower stour down on the tidal stour. And he won with £73.10. 10 ounces. 70 pounds of which was roach, fantastic roach catch. It was a new Christchurch club record at the time. And the other three pound 10 was uh, one or two silver bream and a few dace. And there were other big weights around him, but they were sort of 30 to 36 pounds. And over the years, other people who were probably on the same match would recall the same match, but they'd come up with different weights. I've helped that weigh in and I can remember that 73 10. Other people would say £75, £76, £77. It didn't get exaggerated over £80, but you could see this drift of the figures. And because we don't have access to a, rec a match record to look at it, you have to trust that I'm telling you that 7310 is the correct weight. Now, I've kept fishing diaries since 1969. I was catching fish the year before, and I probably caught a very small number of fish over the three or four years before that in the sort of what was basically an annual fishing trip but in 68 I started to fish a few times I don't know how often caught a few minnows tiny dace and tiny trout out of the piddle and then in 69 I started to fish a great deal more mostly in the piddle in the Thames as well when I was on holiday at Oxford and I remember very few catches from them. We're talking 51 years now and a bit. But because I've got this ancient diary, I can look at a, a date there and it says what I caught. 1st of November 1969 afternoon, fished the River Trent. I called it the Trent, not the Piddle. Road bridge pool, used bread paste, caught some trout. 19 days from 4 inches to 8 ounces according to this number 12 hook used I can't remember that but only this what I wrote in November 1969 has not changed and assuming that I was telling the truth back then and I don't see why I wouldn't and I would have weighed that 8 ounce dace on my little Samson's the facts remain there's no no what's in here there's nothing record breaking or anything else and this is where we come down to the problem with people claiming records or claiming to have caught huge numbers of fish how do you verify what they've said when we have British records there's a procedure of witness statements people saying they might 
do an affidavit. The scales they used would be checked. But in the end, you, you have to trust what they've said. And then it's recorded. That's why it's a record. That's all a record means. It's recorded. It doesn't mean it's a feat of sporting fantasticness or anything like that. It's just something has been recorded. We don't know because Roach are my specialist subject, if you like. If someone caught a four and a half pound roach in 1850, we don't, there's no record of it. It's very unlikely. There's no record of a roach over three pounds until around about 1903. Funnily enough, from very close to where Ray Clark caught his record four pounder, which was one of the very first four pound river roach ever recorded. So we have to rely on those records. If someone then says, I've caught the record roach from a certain river, in other words, a river record, it becomes much more difficult. Who's authenticating it? Who checked the scales? Who, who can guarantee that the way the scales were used, which is even more important, you can have a set of scales that are absolutely spot on within a quarter of an ounce. But if you're so um, lax in, in the way you weigh a fish, you, you just say, oh, well, I weighed it in a net and the net always weighs six ounces when you know damn well that when it's wet, it weighs 12 ounces and you're adding six ounces on effectively with a wet net then you're fooling someone, I'm not sure who, but it's these sort, this sort of attention to detail. It'd be a bit like saying, I've run the 100 metres in five seconds, but no one measured the 100 metres and someone comes along, so actually you only ran 16 metres. No wonder you did it in five seconds. No chance I'd run 100 metres in nine seconds. But it's, again, down to this standard. How How do you know that it is what you say it is. Quite often, even with club records, there's no real authentication. Sometimes some of the big clubs, my local clubs have said, oh, we've checked the scales or we insist on a witness to it. And even then you get old records, records that date back to the 50s, 60s and so on. And they've been printed in the rule in the club books for decades and decades but no one's got any way of checking that what happened all those years ago was correct so the current procedure might be very strict and say oh we need a committee member to see a record fish and yet years ago it was we took someone's word on it a, a similar thing not roach related was that um someone i know uh, tony timms i think it is who looks after the the royalty museum has done a lot of research into the record salmon from the Avon and the Stour and probably the Froom and the Piddle as well. And he's torn his hair out and prompted people like me to dig around in the few records that I've got because I've got different things to him. Trying to track certain legendary salmon from the 1940s and 50s where people said they had 48 or 49 pound salmon. And he's got access to the old record books. One thing with salmon fishing is that when you went salmon fishing and you caught a salmon, you would enter your catch in a logbook for the fishery. Of course, these logbooks then get lost over the over the years. They, if they'd been kept intact, it would have made his life a lot easier. And with a salmon, it was in the old days, it would have been killed, weighed accurately probably in certainly since the 1940s, almost certainly photographed in some cases set up. But at least one fish that he spent, he spent years trying to find um, the truth behind it. And he can't find a single shred of evidence to support it. So whether some angler long ago bragged about a fish that maybe got away and claimed he caught it or I don't know, he doesn't know it's difficult for him to count it as a as a proper record. I've got a feeling, um, talking of records, there's a couple of books that were done by Colin Dyson and Colin Gray, Graham, who were two Sheffield-based journalists back in the 60s and 70s and 80s. And they did two books sponsored by Woodbine, the cigarette people, 
called the Anglin Yearbook 1972 and this is a 73 one I got 72 one and they spent months and months and months digging through the records trying to put together a full record of every record they could find whether it was a list of the biggest ever roach caught the top 50 for all, all the different species they did it for Ireland and Scotland they did sea fishing and then for any venue so say the the River Trent the proper Trent not what I called the Trent they put together the match records the individual species records and they did the best they could and, and they put footnotes and quite often they uncovered legendary fish that were bigger than the current British records and they listed those as well and uh, they did us all a service no one's done quite the same since the uh, the old I think NASG National Association of Specimen Groups or NASA as well that sort of picked up on their big fish lists of roach and tench and pike and chub and everything else and carried it on for a long time but because that got subsumed into the Anglian Trust I'm not sure that those lists are really up to date when I came along and did a similar list for my ro first roach book Big Roach and added one or two for Big Roach 2 it was obvious that some of the fish that had got onto these historic lists were just hybrids or distinctly dodgy to say the least and so it it comes down to judgment and trying to remember so whenever someone says to you oh I've caught the record XYZ for the so and so river ask yourself does it firstly does it actually matter because I don't think it often does but secondly how much truth is in that statement I'm lucky I don't hold any records so I don't have to worry about this although in the days I match fished I, I probably did hold some match records for different waters but again whether those records you know wh when they stood and for what is another matter some waters with match records the weights went up so much from the old days um, breach pond for instance was first match fished in the, the late 50s and back then it was full of tiddler roach and gudgeon a few tiny tench and black bass and in the 60s the top match weight was about six pounds of these tiny little fish we're talking like this so someone caught a couple of hundred tiny little roach and gudgeon there was no way anyone could get 30 pounds or even 10 pounds and so in the late 70s when someone caught a couple of tench for about seven and a half pound that was a match record and then as new species went in there rudd perch and bream so the match record started to really climb up. I had around about eleven pounds of these tiny little rudd in the early eighties, and then as the bream established themselves and bred, uh, that record. First of all, people had some decent catches of sizable bream of the stocked fish. I think Paul Edwards had fourteen pounds, uh, John Bass had thirteen and seventeen pounds. Paul Edwards had. Then the skimmers came through again. Only fish like this. I had about 20 pounds of those that the match record now got to 20 pounds and so it went on and before too long I think I'd set it at over 40 pounds and then people started to get really big weights of big bream it went high 40s into the 50s and eventually someone got over 100 pounds so sometimes a, a progression is easy to follow and, and you can authenticate it but not always and like I say, when it comes to species records for a particular water, then unless something's a, a British record, anything else is just guesswork, I think. For instance, I couldn't tell you the Dace record for the Stour. On the Avon, there's been some monsters. It used to hold the British record with 185. And uh, that record was only thrown out because of the great chuck out of the Record Fish Committee in 1968 when anything they couldn't actually see as a stuffed fish at the time they just said oh well we can't possibly believe it they didn't do any research at all so eventually one or two records got reinstated the uh, old Alma Tryon Barbel record was eventually put back but not by that time it wasn't very long before that 14 pound record was smashed out of sight so the record's much higher nowadays but things like that Dace record was uh, 
there's no reason not to believe it at 185 but on the Stour there's certainly been one or two nudging a pound over the years have there ever been much bigger I don't know possibly one two something like that with the Roach at least we've got a proper had a proper British record from the Stour at uh, Ray Clark's four pound three so it's nice to have a proper one hope I've got you thinking once again uh, remember your memory doesn't work properly it's one of the reasons why when they have historic um, criminal cases where asking people to remember events of 40 years ago it can be almost impossible to get the, the truth they might say oh, I remember it like it was yesterday but your memory has to recycle it over and over again to do that same with uh, your fishing tails time is shortened over many years uh, what seems like 10 years ago you find was actually 20 years ago on that note I'm going to leave you please click like and subscribe and uh, goodbye for now